They're gonna outlaw this motor on trail after this video. It's that much more powerful than the other two. If you want the long story short, the Bafang motor smokes everything. Nothing on the market compares. In this video, we demonstrate why by putting it against two of the proven champions, the Bosch CX and the Shimano EP801, all put together on bikes of similar platforms, very capable in all the elements, including climbing and descent. This video is not sponsored. I personally don't care who wins, but I do have questions when something claims to have 30 more Newton meter of torque than anything else on the market to date. And if it is truly that powerful, how well does it operate as a class one e-mountain bike? Oh, I can't believe I cleared that. All right, final stretch. This is the Bafang motor, the M600. There's not a whole lot on it at all on the internet. I haven't seen much. So I'm gonna be the one to put out content for this as we are building up a DIY carbon bikes Trek clone, the F150E. So I did build up this e-bike from scratch, but that's an entirely different video. I will leave it up here in the iCard and also in the description area. See so if you want to view the whole build on this. Although I did not get to try it out because I had to buy additional cords that didn't come with the kits. That took a while, but I did get them. It's three cords to plug this motor in. And so if you did follow the other video, well, this is how we finished it. I'll probably have a specific video on this for channel members if they want it. But there's just a few things we had to do in order to make this happen because there's just not a widely used motor. Bafang is more so known for their center drive conversion kit that converts any basic bike into an e-bike. But this is an actual two center drive motor for an actual electric mountain bike. But the difference in requirements between how some standard recreational e-bike versus a true e-mountain bike like this operates are night and day. The requirements for how they operate under load, under pressure, under turbulence, and overall how natural they feel versus how fake. Because let's be honest, most e-bikes are just like electric mopeds with pedals for gimmicks. That's not what an e-mountain bike is. So how well does this Bafang motor perform? Driving an electric mountain bike up a steep road like this is not a true testimony of how well it will climb. You have to test it on an actual trail. So we're really taking it to this one. And it will be tested against two other bikes. The first is my Trek Rail 170 millimeter mutant conversion that I built from the ground up. These are the stats. It's got the Bosch CX line. It doesn't have the smart system. That's the generation after. But the power and efficiency and how the motor glides is basically the same. I weigh about 220 plus with all the gear in the Camelback full. <laughs> I don't want to bore you with 18 minutes of like flawless climbing. So these are the few minutes and obstacles where I had some difficulty or just some noticeable points of technicality where the bike did have some problems or struggled. Oh yeah. Oh, dang it. The Bosch CX motor has been king for a long time, but 85 newton meters of torque feels a lot different from somebody who only weighs 150 versus 220, like myself. The power band of the motor also matters, so when you hit its max torque, even in the turbo mode, how well is the motor able to keep cadence over real technical terrain so that you keep momentum and you don't fall off? Overall, I think the bike has done phenomenal. This is still my favorite bike. It's my first e-bike. But I think we're fastly approaching a time where 85 to 90 newton meters simply isn't going to be enough, especially for a heavier person. But this is just one motor. Next, we're going to look at the Husqvarna that has the Shimano's all-new EP801 with stats that make it equally formidable to the Bosch. For anybody wondering, this is the Husqvarna Hardcross 5. It is one of the most well-built bikes out of the factory that I've ever seen. It needs pretty much no modifications. It's meant to go down, meant to go fast, meant to take a beating. It's a true 170 millimeter in the rear, 180 millimeter in the front mullet. Now, I don't know how they got all their parts so cheap to make this bike, maybe off the black market or some sort of like shysty, swindly way, but this bike is extremely cheap for all the components it has. It being a mullet might affect the way it climbs. It's not gonna climb as well as a true 29er, but it will be fairly close. And the additional suspension should be able to soak up a lot of those small bumps as we're riding up in a way that keeps our momentum a little bit better. But the boost mode does move. We're good so far.
bike is nice. The Shimano motor was actually really nice. It had a lot of torque in spots and sections that it, it, the Bosch didn't. But over the up climbs like this, I did feel that the Bosch did a little bit better. Again, that could be because this is a mullet and not a 229er. Could be because of the geometry and the way the bike's set up. The fact that it's meant to go down more than it is to go up. But either way, I was more exhausted and it did take longer, but I think it was negligible. Especially considering how well the bike did on the descent after I got up here but that's for a different video when we do a full review on the husk itself. One thing I got to tell you though, is after that run with a husk, I am tired. And I still got to get a second win to take the clone up here and see what it does. All right, so next we got uh, our DIY carbon bikes, uh, F-150E that we just built up. And that one's gonna go on the trail next. It has the Fang M600 motor. It has 30 more Newton meter of torque than the Shimano EP801 or the Bosch ZX. I'm glad it, it, it definitely, when you when you pedal it, it has quite a bit of power. So it's gonna see how much that power actually pays off on the trail. I mean, just testing it around, I wondered how much more overpowered it would be, what it's gonna do to a, to a standard drivetrain because we have an XT drivetrain on there. You wanna run a T-type drivetrain on full power e-bikes, I think that's the best thing to do in terms of like it being able to handle the load of the motor plus U. But uh, so far we've been just running manual drivetrains. That was an XO drivetrain standard on the Husk and now we're gonna run a XT drivetrain here on the clone. So this one will be directly comparable to like a Trek Rail 9.7 with a carbon frame and pretty much all the same components, rock shocks, domain. The only thing difference is gonna be the rear shocks could be a little bit deader, a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and tune it make sure it's ready to go. I'm gonna catch my second wind and then we're gonna go up the trail. Oh, I really like how this rear shock feels. <coughs> I didn't even clear that with the other two, I think. I cleared out with this one finally. Yeah, it's the fastest I ever went over this section. I've got to be cooking it all the time, even with the screw ups. Yeah, let's shim on our drive. Can't beat that whopping three, that swooping of the three gears at a time. Yeah. This is crazy. This is crazy power. It's the monster. It's preposterous power. Maybe. Oh! I did it! Oh, that's a huge thing. That's huge. I haven't been able to do that in three runs. So powerful, I need to have to keep the seat post all the way up. This is gear fall shit all day. For somebody else, for you, it's like, yeah, the torque. If you get stopped like that, the torque off the line. So helpful. That's immensely helpful. I'm not even tired. I'm not near as tired as I was when I took up that husk right now. And I was completely fresh when I took that husk up. Completely fresh. Preposterous power. It's ridiculous. The XT drivetrain handled it. There was no skipping or pushing. I thought that we might experience a blown drivetrain at some point. Obviously didn't shift under a load in a manual drivetrain. Now this thing had so much power. I'm, I'm climbing. This is my second run up here. I did it in way faster and I'm less tired and I wasn't even fresh. I was like my second win, which is like not near as good as my first win. So man, it climbs so good. If you're like a heavier person, 250 pounds plus, you know, this motor might be for you. Like an extra large, six, three, six, four tall, 250 pound guy or gal. Like this motor will help you up there 
because I, I could see where the other ones would be limiting. The heavier you are, probably the lighter you are. If you're under 200 pounds, all those other motors, they probably benefit you tremendously and you wouldn't even tell the difference. And this one would just be like, why are you even on this thing? But the heavier you are, the bigger you are, that's where this counts. My bigger worry was with all that torque, was it gonna be real hard on the drivetrain? Was it gonna spin me out of control? And the fact is no. The fact is when I did have to stop for sections, I couldn't nimbly turn the bike around because it's too tight and I had to re-pedal. Um, that's the hardest part is re-pedaling. So you literally sit on the seat and not have to stand out of the saddle to get weight over the wheel. You just have to push a little bit and then the sheer amount of torque will get you going off a stop. That's the most exhausting thing about climbing. The climbing is exhausting, but stopping and then having to restart a climb, terrible. So this, and this has made it a whole lot better. So the controller had one issue. I bumped it with my knee and it bumped it off this grommet here. So I gotta, I gotta clean that up. But other than that, the control, and then obviously the controller is really hard to see with sunglasses on. I couldn't even tell it was on. I had to like look at it again. So polarized sunglasses are not your friend when it comes to this thing. All right, so it's just like I said, it, the thing smokes everything. <laughs> like it, that was what I said in the beginning of the video. I showed you everything to prove that well, it was more or less what I said in the video. So I am right around 210, probably 225 with all that gear on. So anybody who's weighing like well over 200 pounds, like say you're a 6'4 person, that you're like 250 with gear, you're gonna love the Bafang M600 because like it's gonna make you feel like you're only 150 pounds. So I can only imagine what a person who only weighs 150, 160, who gets on a full powered e-bike like the Trek Rail or that Hus Hard Cross 5, you probably would just sail up something. Now you get to feel that way if you're a heavier person. I would say that's the biggest benefit. If you're a light person and you get this bike, you're just gonna sail. It's not even gonna be fair. You're just gonna leave everybody behind. <laughs> I think the bike should be outlawed for anybody under 200 pounds, personally. Drawbacks, you only have a 600 watt motor. Obviously the standard is 720 or better now, especially for carbon frames. But here's the thing, the Bafang motor is so powerful that on modes three and four, because it has six modes, at mode three and four, you are already equaling the power of the Bosch CX and the Shimano EP801. And then like mode five and boost just left them behind. Oh, I can't believe I cleared that. <laughs> As far as how natural it felt versus how artificial, like, was it gonna be an actual EMTB? Meaning, do you just feel superhuman or do you really feel the bike taking control over your position like, like a recreational e-bike would? And the answer is it did feel very natural. The motor's movement mimicked the pedal cadence, which is what an actual center drive EMTB motor is supposed to do. It's not supposed to feel fake like it completely takes over and hijacks the power of the bike. It also wasn't any louder than the Bosch or the Shimano, though it did have its own unique sound. The motor's power output mirrored my personal output as we tackled the trails together, and I did not notice any additional strain on the drivetrain as I had initially suspected. That was my biggest fear. I know the only motor we weren't able to test was the Bros, but let's be honest, the Bros are much more comparable in stats to the Shimano and the Bosch. And if those two didn't have anything for the Bafang, then the Bros wasn't gonna have anything. The controller, though it was really hard to see with polarized sunglasses, was actually much more inquisitive. Again, it had six modes, and you could really feel just a minute difference between all of the modes. It was very evenly distributed versus, say, the Shimano um, controller, which had three modes, Eco, Trail, and Boost, and then the truck had four, which it was a little bit more of a spread, but still fairly noticeable difference between each mode. With the Bafang, you could really dial in the modes very smoothly. And it also had different power options. If you press the power button, you switch through the power buttons. It had different things going on there that you could choose. It also had an additional wire on the harness that came out and that's either to a throttle or to a light. I don't actually know what it's specifically for, but it had additional options that the other ones just simply don't have. It's actually pretty nice. I wish that there would be a better push on behalf of Bafang for like better instructions, more marketing, because the motor actually truly is nice. I like to see more bikes with it. I think 120 Newton meter of torque is gonna be the new norm. You know, DJI just released, they're gonna put out a motor with 120 Newton meter. That motor is gonna run the show because DJI is just one of those companies with a presence in the US and the rest of the world where it leaves its mark and it's known for its customer service and its quality. So I think Bafang, if you just did more, you could be more, but maybe they don't wanna be. I just really wanted to build up my own e-bike. Ever since I did the whole bike thing, I've started it. I've always liked to build and maintenance and work on it. Never liked to depend on a bike shop ever for anything. And so it was just nice to finally build one up. I didn't think that it would become my favorite e-bike though. 
this one, by the end of the trail, I started looking at those other two like, I don't know, you're not as fun to ride. So I started actually just taking this one on all the other trails. I took it up another trail, which was not near as aggressive, but maybe a little bit more technical. And uh, I was clearing things that I know personally I would not be able to clear with the other two. So it's something to consider. I know there's not a whole lot of bikes with that stock motor. Um, you can get a DIY carbon frame uh, F150E. With this motor, you got to put it together, but it's loads cheaper than anything else. And if you got a bunch of leftover components or you want to piece some components out of eBay to build your bike up, it's probably can build it up for substantially less than what I paid for the other two and have a better bike. Definitely changed my mind on a lot of things, but it was uh, it was definitely an experience you guys got to check out for yourself. Anyways, guys, this is my take. Thank you much. Let me know what you think in the comments. Appreciate it.